Hey, Jeff Metal Brooks with E3 Innovate. Again, down in the crawl space of the Magdalen House, a house that we've done Earthcraft certification on. I wanted to show you another feature um, that really makes this house stand out and energy efficient. Now, my company um, did the, the vapor barrier. We helped with the encapsulation of the crawl space. I wanted to show you one product that, that we, we like to use in a, in a crawl space, and that's a spray foam. Here we've used, in the rim band, we've used an, an open cell, a half pound open, uh, open cell spray foam. The rim band is one of the most critical points of the entire house, especially the rim band between the foundation wall and the first floor. And what we mean by rim band, that's really quite simply is the area where the frame floor, which is the floor you walk on, meets the foundation wall, typically a cinder block wall. There's a lot of pressure differential, uh, a lot of air movement in between this floor system. So if you don't have a well sealed rim seal, rim band, then you're going to get a lot of heat transfer and a lot of air movement out of this space. We also did, uh, did a little foam strip um, during the construction when they were actually laying the foundation joist uh, on top of this. But here we've gone back with, again, a, a premium product, an open cell foam. It's going to completely air seal and insulate this rim band. Um, we also sprayed it here just to kind of help affix the plastic one more uh, mechanism to fix the plastic to the foundation wall. Again, the foundation block is core filled uh, foam. That's when, when they're laying the foundation block. So we have a very well insulated foundation wall all the way up through the rim band. And this is, the spray foam is the premium, the best choice. It is. There we, are a secondary choice and on down the line as far as bad insulation next. Exactly. And we, we prefer this product um, simply because it is an air sealer and insulator in one. Uh, you know, fiberglass bad insulation is, is a way to do it. Uh, it's, it's probably a little more budget conscious. Um, I wouldn't say that it's more effective, though. A fiberglass insulation really likes to be encapsulated on six sides. That makes it very challenging to do in, in the rim band situation. So I really think that a spray foam application is about the only way to really, really, truly effectively insulate and air seal the rim band. Because technically, if you use bat, you would probably need to caulk around every joint, which is labor intensive, and then put the exactly. bat in, which people don't typically do. Yeah, and that's if you, if, again, if a, and if a product's installed correctly, if you look at the life of the product, um, actually the, the, the upfront higher cost of spray foam is probably greatly reduced if you factor in the labor cost of, of, of installing other products the right way. Yeah. Unfortunately, we see we see a lot of times when that fiberglass bat is not installed maybe the way that it was meant to be installed. And the, and this is a new house, but on existing houses that are older like brick ranches or even Victorians or Craftsman, usually the rim board area, the pocket is never insulated. Exactly. And exactly. so that's a lot of energy, if, especially if, it crawl, if you have the crawl space, basement or whatever. Uh, but this product could be used it on that in that situation, is that correct? Yeah, and that's that's our actually most common application is in existing homes uh, when we're doing a lot of encapsulation work on existing homes, a lot of moisture and mold issues. We will go back and use the spray foam just because, again, quite simply, it's really really about the only product that can effectively air seal and insulate that rim band. And I have had clients who have insulated the joist pocket and the foundation wall and seen a dramatic change in the conditioning space. So I have seen that happen. Um, and talk a little bit about the, how you seal. This is a sealed crawl space and you've got your vapor barrier down here, but talk about, now you went, uh, I think, a little above board, which is the way you do quality stuff, but you sealed the uh, top of that vapor barrier with the spray foam too, and I had never seen that done. It's a great idea, I think. Yeah, we, we actually, uh, typically two or three different ways that we fix the uh, plastic to the foundation wall. You always want to do at least two. Um, we use a double-sided uh, mastic tape on there and then we'll also go back and every six inches we'll, we'll do a masonry nail mm -hmm. again, just to have some type of mechanical fastening also a tape fastening when we're using the spray foam such as we were in this in this case we'll always go back and just put some put some spray foam on that strip as well again that's just a spray foam adheres to to just about anything it's a permanent inert product so it's uh, unless someone comes in and physically removes it it's not going to go anywhere just another reason, or just another way to assure that this plastic always stays fastened. In a conditioned crawl space, it's the, the plastic, the vapor barrier, is the most important part of the entire crawl space because it's what's really controlling indoor air quality and also soil moisture. So you have to make sure that it's sealed appropriately. That's why we took it at, at least six inches off the wall. All of our seams are overlapped uh, by 12 inches and then taped, uh, again, using a high quality tape. And I also noticed you sprayed, this is where the return area is coming from the outside unit, yes. and you sprayed around the main ductwork. And these are very large ducts, so we have our supply and return mm -hmm. 
and uh, I thought that was a great use of the uh, spray foam too. Yeah, that's just that's actually going back into the unit. We have a we have a package unit sitting outside. So that's that's always the the awkward awkward area. It's very tough to air seal and insulate where the two uh, main trunks are, are exiting the foundation wall, going back into the package unit. Again, it's just another application where we see the spray foam really really helps effectively air seal and insulate. And you and I were under a house where near the return this location leaves are blowing in so it was not effectively closed off so i doubt this will happen here at this location again unless someone physically removes it this will this will effectively seal off uh, the inside crawl space from the outside it's and a good way to do it the reason we want to do this again is to keep out moisture exactly and that's that's why condition crawl spaces uh, you know curtis our builder here has been doing condition crawl spaces for quite a while now um, and that's the main reason why we're seeing uh, seeing more and more homeowners and builders switch to conditioned crawl spaces. We have such a moisture and mold concern here in the southeast, again, just because it's so humid. The only way to really, truly, effectively stop mold and moisture, moisture growth is to stop humidity into this crawl space. The only way to control humidity is to really condition this space. And then also in this condition, where uh, if radon does show up, uh, we have a way for it to get out and that, that kind of thing. The other thing, I don't think we hooked up the radon system yet. We have to wait. How many? How many? How long do we have to wait before we test for radon to know if we need to put um, a system monitoring system in? Uh, an active system. Again, we've got the passive system hooked up. But um, typically, at the, at the time, this was a, a house where we were building for a nonprofit group. Um, but typically, at the, at the time of sale or move in, that's when most folks, most folks will go ahead and test for radon. So it doesn't have to be really any any length of time. As soon as that house is, is, is ready to go, sealed up, ready ready to be sealed up, typically if you're doing a short-term radon test, you'll need that house to be closed conditions for about three days. But this house is ready. It can be tested for radon. Again, if there's high levels, higher than four picocuries per liter, then what they'll do is they'll just go into the attic and install a fan uh, on the vent stack that Curtis installed during construction. Again, it can save thousands of dollars on a radon system. Um, if, if you go ahead and build this infrastructure in place during the construction process rather than waiting after the fact.